afternoon and welcome back to the Facebook page for the Kingston Library Services. My name is Lou and I am delighted to share with you this afternoon a teen ebook review. This book is titled Birthday and is by Meredith Russo. But first of all, I would like to seize the opportunity to thank you all so much for your amazing ebook and the audiobook reviews. Seeing your videos has just lit up the days of all of my library colleagues. We are ecstatic to know you're borrowing books and really getting to know the apps very well and are just benefiting from all that is available online for you to enjoy. I have become completely absorbed and invested in this beautiful book and to do it justice I wrote out my review and would love to share it with you. Let me give you an insight to Meredith herself. In 2013, she started living as her true and authentic self. A trans woman, she is brave and a motivational voice for so many. She won the Stonewall Book Award in 2017, and her short stories and essays have featured in the New York Times. Talented at writing, her debut novel, If I Was Your Girl, had raving reviews, and I personally wit it witnessed its overwhelming impact and its positive effect on Instagram. The hashtag game was strong there. Meredith's growth and experience of being transgender resonated throughout this book. This successful first story, which I saw on our Hook and Chesington Library bookshelf in the teen section, made me more determined to read her second book, which is birthday <laughs> and can you imagine my delight when I was gifted it by a family member they know me very well like I said this book is readily available for you to download right now on the RB digital uh, app you can type in birthday or you can title type in the author's name firstly I need to explain how the book would be shelved if it this physical copy was back on our bookshelves in the library. On the spine, you would find a tea sticker, either a yellow sticker with a black T or a black sticker with a yellow T plus. The difference is very significant and I would really like to break down why we have these stickers on the spine. For example, if you've moved out of reading books from the junior section of the library, it's great that you are starting to read the teen section. It's perfect if you're starting to expand your interest in what you're reading. The books may be longer, the plots may be more gripping, and you will be open to even more genres such as sci-fi and fantasy, something that you might not have had an opportunity to read before. Uh, there are a rich collection of these books available. In terms of the black sticker, the T plus sticker, it is always on the spine and very pronounced and when I get to meet our teens and our parents and guardians who are maybe accompanying them, I, I really like to make it clear that these books cover a lot more topics. Um, there is a, a broader range and such themes that are covered are the changing dynamics and relationships, uh, your sexual identity, um, new experiences, mental health, death, such persecution as racism, and some many other themes that as you grow and develop, you'll become more aware of in your life. So these are an introduction to them. If you're unsure whether this particular book is suitable, I always advise open to the middle of the book or online scroll to the middle of the book and get an idea about who the characters are and what's happening with the plot and see if it's suitable for yourself or for your child if you're making that decision. Um, this is a technique that I swear by and it is very successful. Um, you are at the richest and most developed part of the story and it's going to be really heavy and fast-paced the plot so again you will see whether it's appropriate for you. Um, this book would need a black tea sticker because it deals with such mental health conditions as depression, 
the issue of self-harm and touches on suicidal behaviours. It is fiction and the book does list the contact details for the Samaritans and Mermaids uh, charity or organisation if you are affected by anything uh, touched on in the book. So I found that actually very comforting to know. But you must bear in mind that everyone's reading and ability and choice is different. It is unique to you. I personally advise that this book is suitable for the ages of 14 years plus. But again, it is up to your own judgment whether you choose to download and read this book today. So let me introduce you to the two lead characters of this story. We have Eric and Morgan. Eric is cisgender, who is someone whose identity matches the sex they were assigned at birth. Morgan is transgender, which is a wide-ranging term for people whose gender identity or gender expression differs from the biological sex they were assigned at birth. These definitions are very key and it's interesting to see that at the start of the story, both Eric and Morgan use the pronouns he and him, but Morgan aspires to live by the pronouns she and her which is param paramount and evident as the story develops. Two families, one birth date. A freak storm keeps newborn boys and their parents inside a hospital for several days. Who would know that this coincidence would lead to a story that I quote is 18 years in the making being a love story. This story is covered over a six year period and you are given an insight into the boys' lives on their birthdays. A friendship tested by the profound difference in their family dynamics it is also rattled by the sports expectations for the students of Thebes. A scholarship is the only way out of this slow moving mountain town. Puberty sparks changes in their bodies and Morgan fights a heart-wrenching internal battle when he recognises that he is in fact a girl, but she is in the wrong body. The book starts slowly, but you can sure the power through each chapter with desperate hunger to learn more. You become enveloped in Morgan's sadness, conflict, and you to be endeared to, to Eric's sixth sense. He can always read how Morgan is feeling at the exact time despite being miles apart. This journey and their developing relationship is told from both characters' viewpoints which is deeply moving and sometimes unsettling. I did become frustrated um, as to why Eric could not pinpoint what was wrong with Morgan in terms of why he was having these angry outbursts, why he was choosing such dark music to listen to and why he was becoming very reclusive um, but again I'm carrying my own emotional baggage when I'm reading this book and it will be different for every reader so you may be able to step in Eric's shoes and understand why he was struggling to come to terms with what was happening with his best friend. It is so key to pay attention to how a childhood flashback reappears throughout the story. It is the catalyst for many changes in feelings and an openness to where everyone may go in their choices in life. So Morgan fell from a very high tree. He was the fifth branch from the top and Eric thought that his best friend had died because when he saw Morgan lying on the ground his heart just stopped and he said Morgan if you die I die. However when he stands over Morgan he's absolutely relieved to find that Morgan is in fact alive and not severely injured thankfully but what does move him is seeing Morgan with Morgan's long hair splayed out around their head and just been struck by how beautiful Morgan is and an urge to 
kiss them. This memory sparks desire and a curiosity in both the characters and the readers because you really want to know what will come of this. Something I wish could be changed about this novel is Morgan's perception of themselves. They perceive themselves as being ill because of a longing to live as a woman but this journey of self-discovery and living as your true authentic self is not an illness, it is brave, it is courageous. This is what it means to be truly living. Everyone needs to read this book. It will leave a resounding and powerful mark and will give us more of an insight into someone who is going through this transition. Homophobia and hate and bullying do appear frequently in this book, but I think the message of the story in which the message needs to be heard all around the world is that this hatred will never win. And you know what? This is supported by Morgan's powerful reception and positive comments and following on YouTube as she progresses further and further into her transition. I love this book. I would read it again in an instant and it is a very quick read. I would have loved to have gained an insight into Eric and Morgan's journey and their own growth in this current time because I can imagine this book was probably based around the times of the 90s because we have music played on cassette players and we have VHS video recordings as well. So it would be really nice to see them in a world where there is more rights for the LGBTQ plus community and to see where Morgan is in her journey and in her life and where Eric is as well and his key role in that life. I hope this insight is very useful. I do think there needs to be more representation of the LG BDQ plus community and if you would like to introduce your child into reading more diverse books this is definitely a beautiful love story. I hope you've enjoyed my review. Definitely pick up the book today and I hope you have a fantastic afternoon. Bye!